All right, everybody, thank you so much for attending today's Office Hours. My name is Mark Stepp. I'm the Chief Innovation Officer here at Revolve, kind of the creator of the workflow platforms and the relationship scoring piece. If you guys don't know me, please get to know me, send me emails, and just ask whatever questions you, you know, need to know about Revolve. I can certainly give you insight and, and information. I've spent the last 31 years developing real estate technology. Uh, not everybody gets it right away. And that's what I want to try to solve. I, I want to help you guys understand the why. So that's about me. On the other end of the line, I do have Lisa Crumby. She's with our premium services department. Lots and lots of knowledge on everything real estate. And what I use her for is the, the information that she she has and being able to spread Great information to you guys as users. She's online with you guys every day. And what, 13 years of real estate experience, Lisa? 21, Mark. 21. Oh, my goodness. Time warp. Sorry. Right? I thought I remember I 13. I when I met you. <laughs> yeah, that's, that's true. That's true. Been, been here for a while. Um, but we are here to help you guys understand things. So, uh, today's agenda, we're going to be talking about the new team member processes, things that you guys need to create, or we will provide you with some information on how you can download some of our systems. To do what? Whenever a team, new team member comes in, verifications and checklists, the, the documents that you need to make sure are signed, setting up your team members in real in RealVolve itself. And what we want to do is mastermind with you guys. We want to really go deep into how you guys are currently doing things and gain on each other's knowledge. So this is not just me teaching. Again, I want you guys to supply information, give us your thoughts, your insights, and the things that you're currently doing. If you have systems, great. Let's let's you know take a look at some of the innovative things that you've already put in there. And if you're not systematized yet, we'll figure out how we can help you help you do that. So um, we're going to tag team this somewhat, and I want Lisa to kind of share some of of what she's gone through with some of the things that she's built for the Navigator team, and how she shares that with those people that go through Navigator, and what what all she's good at, which is a lot of things. So Lisa, can you uh, unmute yourself and kind of go through a couple of these slides and we're going to do this and then we'll go through the, the mastermind part as well. Absolutely. Thank you, Mark. Um, yeah. So my agent onboarding workflow is just a, you know, it may vary as all, you know, every agent works a little bit different with their hiring process. Um, but we do have the basic verifications and checklists that we want to share with you. Um, and I'd love to be able to, you know, feel free to speak up and post in chat as well, because we are going to take you through the process of, you know, a little bit of what I have and what I feel are important checklists and to-dos when we have a new agent come on board. Um, so please um, go ahead and post anything in chat. Um, one of the things that we really need to find important is when we have a new agent, we want to make sure that we start a workflow on that new agent because there's a lot of things that need to get done as we bring someone on board. For example, one of the first steps that I have in mind are, you know, we need to review the contract, you know, because they're hiring on with the broker. So we wanna make sure that we have that contract in force, that we save a copy of it to that client folder. We wanna make sure that we're verifying the license is active with the state. We wanna make sure that if we are using Google, that you can create a folder and put in all that agent's information. So we want to make sure that, you know, as we get the information as far as important documents, which is coming up next, that we are putting in a copy of the W-9s, a copy of the driver's license. Um, we want to make sure that we're current with them staying up to date on real estate training. We want to keep them trained and show them how to work with contracts and disclosures. That's if they're a new agent, of course. Um, even to-dos, you know, weekly follow-ups with the agent schedule a meeting with the managing broker and talk about a business plan with that new agent. And then as time goes on, then we want to go ahead and we want to set that new agent up on your lead gen platform if you're purchasing leads. 
So I'd love to hear maybe, Mark, too, if you have some insight on verification and checklists that you do as soon as you get a new agent on board. Anybody that wants to unmute, one of the things that's really cool, whenever we announced this meeting, uh, one of our rock stars, um, Sarah Courtney, you've probably seen some of her videos and stuff that we've done before. Sarah reached out to us and just said, hey, you can take a look at at the workflow that I have available. And if any of it's you know usable, let's you know go through that. But you know, I'd also like to improve it as well. And I think that mindset is real important whenever you you guys are building workflows or using existing workflows. If you're if you're just using some that we've already provided, think about how you would actually do things, not just take it as it is, but you know, how would I do this if it was me? What was what would be my world class scenario of of onboarding a new agent to my team? And and that's the the thing that we want to you know, kind of build from. So the the checklist and stuff that she shared is one thing. And I don't know, I was going through the list of things and this is kind of what I want to do as far as mastermind piece. And we'll kind of go back and forth between this and, and the other. But with the things that you do whenever new agent, what are some of the things that you guys do? And this is a, sa a small sample of what Sarah shared with us. This is Sarah's list. She has 19 things that she does through the process as far as the, the team contact info. Whenever a new team member comes on, she will send out a Excel spreadsheet of information of the existing team to that new team member. Say, hey, with an email saying, hey, be sure to add these people to your address book on your phone and then use them as needed. Um, the one thing that whenever I was looking at this, uh, the one thing that she does is sends it as a as an Excel spreadsheet. Now, um, is Sarah online? I'm not sure if I saw her. I don't think she is. No, I don't see her. Um, I would love to pick her brain just a, a few minutes. One thing that I would probably do in the same scenario, I, I do a similar type of thing, but instead of actually sending it as an attachment, I would send it as a link from a Google spreadsheet and then just keep that Google spreadsheet up to date so that you're constantly having it available for all your team members to be able to access just a, a link uh, with that information instead of the, you know, attaching uh, an, an actual attachment, but that's just me. The other thing that you could do very easily is with our new webhook capability is be able to just go ahead and add your new members information straight to that Google spreadsheet. So that'd be a, an interesting idea. But she, well, first thing she does <clears throat> is just sends that new team member a, a list of everybody that's on the team, all their phone numbers and contact information. Then she'll go in and she will send a welcome email to uh, specific contacts, which are her team members. So everybody that's on the team gets this email. And in this email, it's basically saying, hey, everybody, here is um, a new person. The information about them, hey, you know, make sure you add this information to your phone book on your phone and, and contact information. So a great way to send the new agents information back to everybody, just making sure that you announce them and welcome them to the system. There's a, a piece in here for sending out an email for um, inviting them to a Dropbox and Zillow team, which is a, a good one. And then this one I really, really liked, the week one email. This will go through and whenever the person that is the new agent will receive this and basically it comes in, it says, okay, there are some things that you need to do in order for you to be legitimate on this team. You need to go through um, the new agent mandatory training. You need to get your uh, photography headshot done. I mean, there's just, you know, a complete list. And what this is, is this is a checklist for that new agent just to come in, get the things done that they need that first week. And then there's a, a week two and a week three, potentially, of things that you can do for making sure that they get everything in line to be successful in your team. 
So I want to hear some input from, from you guys. What, what types of things do you do for your new team members? Don't be shy. Either chat or unmute yourself. Remember, this is mastermind group. <laughs> I'll keep talking, but I want input from other people as well. The other thing that sh um, that is done as far as um, now, I'm not going to go into it because there's some passwords and stuff and making sure the new user has access to passwords that they need for different things. The um, even the the reminder to themselves saying, hey, you need to send out information with your bio. We need your bio. Can you start typing in your bio of, of your real estate experience, stuff like that. And it also, that email that's being sent out gives that person some examples of existing bios. So that's, I thought that was a good one just to kind of help them get along. Um, there's a item for going through and making sure that they're added to the social media, making sure that there's announcements that are being made. Hey, just wanted to welcome new agent name to our Facebook group, you know, whatever that information is and making sure that it looks good. You, this is another one where if, if you did it properly, you could actually do it as a web hook that takes you to an image and post it on Facebook and does all the stuff for you absolutely automatically. Just using the webhook and Zappy or be able to create the content that you need for the social media piece. Lisa, any other ideas? Um, well, what I was going to recommend was maybe going to your spreadsheet, Mark, because I'd love to hear some ideas because when I'm building out a workflow, I usually write everything down because I have to think about my processes first before I can even look at Revolve. So I'm thinking about all the activities that I typically do when I hire someone new. I think about who's going to be in charge of that task, when it's going to happen. So sometimes I feel it's better just to start on a spreadsheet. So yeah. let's let's start talking about activities because when we do this, rather than looking at um, Sarah Courtney, um, we can actually show you how to build it out. Yeah. So out on our help.realvolve.com, we've got this spreadsheet available and you guys can just download it and use it if you want to use this type of thing. I'll also make this type of thing available to you guys that attend the mastermind so that you guys can just build upon this if you want. And the way that I designed the spreadsheet was to put the title of the activity, whatever it is that we want to do to build the checklist of, of things that we need to do for the workflow. Who's supposed to do it? Who are we doing that activity with? Uh, is it the workflow contact? Is it tagged contacts or whatever? And then what type of information that we need to generate when it's going to be done? Um, and then there's an instruction column that just kind of goes through the ideas of what are some of the checklists, the templates, the instructions and stuff that I want to include? So you can kind of pre-build this, just mastermind it on your own as far as building out any kind of workflow this way. And then take line by line and put it into the actual workflow. This just kind of does the brain dump. So, you know, verify the contact information and add it to real vault was, was one, making sure that we... Get that new user in there. Uh, welcome them to the team. Send out the link to the contact information. Um, add them to the Dropbox. Um, add the um, agent to the Fast Track class, which if there's any kind of training that you guys go through, certainly put them on that. Begin the bio. We just kind of went through that. Um, update company website. You know, things get forgotten, and we want to make sure that if you're using any kind of systems for your website, make sure that you update those. Make sure that you add that agent, the photo, the the content that is needed in order to show them properly on your website. Uh, schedule business planning meeting with the managing broker. Uh, make sure that it's it's actually scheduled. 
Um, make sure that they go through some real evolve training at some point. Make sure that they know at least the, the fundamentals and give them links to our classes. Um, two week journey. This is uh, the following two weeks from Sarah's piece. Order sign writers with their name on them. You know, this is going to something that has to be printed. It's going to take a, a little bit of time. Make sure that those get done and then, you know, some kind of final review. But what are the things that you guys do? Put it in this uh, chat if you have something or if you just want to unmute yourself. Come on, guys. This is a mastermind. Share your thoughts. What do you do when a new agent comes online? Import their contacts into the system with a tag and do a contact cleanup workflow to update the category, stage, status, et cetera, for each contact. That's a great one. Whenever it, you hear the comment, garbage in, garbage out, you know, you can get somebody's information, dump it into your database, but if you don't do some cleanup in there, it's just garbage a lot of times. So as a checklist item, import contact information from new agent and clean up. Well, I'm fairly new. I've been uh, doing this for like two months now, uh, mentoring, coaching, bringing new agents on and everything. But we don't use Realvolve for the agents. Just the staff uses it for onboarding the agents and offboarding, of course. Yeah. So, that, yeah. And that's fine. If, if one of the things that you can do with any of your workflows is make sure that you're sending, even if they don't use Realvolve, in their own mm -hmm. logins and whatever that right. tasks, you know, can be created and send them. But there are things that you, at, at, whenever that new agent comes on, there are things that you do for those new agents as they're getting signed in, they're, they're getting into your system. What are the mm -hmm. things that you do for them? What are coaching things that you're doing for your new agents? No, oh, well, we're actually, we have a kickstart program that we uh, invite them into after they've gone through most of our online training. We've got buyer and seller uh, online training that we've recorded ourselves and uh, we have them go through all of that, but we also set them up with all of the different systems that they're going to need. We give them sign-ins and everything for like DocuSign, uh, back agent, Texas Realtors, you know, all of the different systems that they'll be using. Whenever you go through this, are you, are you doing any kind of verification for yourself that they've actually done the process? And Yes, yes. Okay. In our back agent training system, it's called Kajabi. We actually have access to all the analytics, how many times they've logged into it to do the training, which trainings they've watched, uh, if they have actually... Uh, Perfect. Paid attention and gone through them, and yeah, it keeps track of everything. So we we analyze that every week. Perfect. Yeah, and and that's something that making sure that they go through agents can be lazy at times. Oh yes. And and you, you want to make sure that they get their stuff done. So you know sometimes these are things that you as the existing team want to remind them of doing things and you can actually set this up so that it emails them to say hey remind, remember to go do this or you know have you done it let me know and then you can check it off as a checklist item within your system andrew says set them up on a cma program um, email send out program etc yeah any any of the the systems that you're currently in, in kind of online systems that you're doing, you know, sign them up for that. And this is where you could create it as a checklist. So as a new agent comes in, you put, uh, we build an actual checklist in Revolve so that as they do it, you can check it off. If they haven't let you know that it's been done, then you can turn it off. Just to kind of get maybe a checklist item on there, Mark, is maybe have an activity title to set as agent profiles on various websites. So, for example, get them set up on Zillow, Trulia, Realtor.com, making sure their profiles are set up. Okay, so I'm going to do this as a checklist. Um, Zillow, Trulia, website. And Realtor.com. Realtor.com. 
Okay. So the nice thing about doing it on a spreadsheet like this is we don't have to fill in all the, the content right away. What we can do is just kind of do the brain dump, just get the things out of our mind. So many times people will get into a situation where they just have a, a brain fog or, a, you know, the freeze of their brain and they, they can't think of things. And it's just, what are other things? I don't care who does it, when it gets done or anything yet. I just want to know what is it that, that we want to do. Lisa, I know you have a big checklist of things that you're putting into the navigator system. Is there other, are there other items that you have? Yeah, there's a, I mean, I have about 40 activities in agent onboarding, but that's including, you know, making sure the agent gets trained on disclosures and contracts, um, getting familiar with the local real estate market, you know, because they need that training, especially if they're a new agent. So my list is pretty detailed and inclusive on things like that. Um, and then getting them set up on their lead gen. I think Suzanne was talking about that. Um, Let's see here. What, do I, what else do I have? You know, continuing education. You know, are they keeping up on that? Because they have to have so many hours per year. So, I mean, the list can go on and on on my end, and I keep adding to it. Yep. Other ideas? Mark, one thought I, I had, um, you know, when we are onboarding employees internally, uh, you have this transition period. You know, you've, you've recruited them. They say yes. And now, you know, there may be two weeks or 30 days before they can actually join your team. And so you, you're still in this nurturing phase of building a relationship, maintaining a relationship, keeping them excited about the role, making sure they don't change their mind. So that could certainly be part of the recruiting workflow, but might have a place for it here as well. Good point. Mm -hmm. Pre-team nurture, things that you want to do before they actually sign on the dot or before they after they've signed it on the dotted line, but before they actually get everything going. And can, depending on where they're coming from, what they're doing, there may need to be some lag time between. So absolutely. Mm -hmm. But that could be in, uh, you know, post, post recruiting item is where I would probably put that myself. Mm -hmm. You might have a, a whole nother recruiting workflow that you go through whenever you're going through the process and, and making sure that you complete everything. Right. And I think now that we're kind of going back to where listings are on the market longer, agents are starting to do more open houses. Let's get that new agent trained on holding, hosting an open house. But one of the, the week two items for Sarah's um, I thought was really good there. They go through and in each department that they go through. So the closing department, how do you go through the close? Just kind of showing them the process and making sure they understand the process. So they, they had to set up an appointment with, with each of the team members that deal with each of the, the closing process and listing process uh, elements of their team. What, what does that process look like? And not that they have to do it all, but at least they know the process and the training. So setting up just appointments with other team members. Anybody else? Any other ideas? What we can do, um, I don't want to, have a lot of blank space in here, but what we can do then is kind of use this as a starting point for things that we would add to the workflow and actually do the workflow. So once I fill out and, and go through the process of doing just the, the brain dump of, of content, then I'll go in there and start deciding who all is going to do this. Now you could say, you know, these are things for the team leader, maybe it's the assistant, whoever, you know, whoever you want to do this with maybe everything's done you know, with the assistant, you can just pick it, but uh, we've got different choices for things in this spreadsheet that I built that we can make available to you guys. It's, it's in our help, but if you, if you just select um, a name, you can also, if, if everybody's the same, you know, every item is the same thing, you just cut, copy and paste type stuff. 
In this case, you know, we can just kind of come down through here. Is it a to do? Is it an email? While it's not real important that you know these in the spreadsheet, it's, it's just thinking through it. What I do like to do is if I know it's an email, I'll go ahead and, and set up the emails templates. So let me bring over this right here. So um, a lot of times you have existing templates you, or existing emails, and maybe you've gone in and you've, you've already sent emails in the past to people. What you can do is grab copies of those and, and just paste them in. So you might have something like, you know, here's a subject line and we want to put this into Realvolve um, where you would put in like the team name welcomes and then the, the person that's going to receive the email. So you can build out all your templates in Realvolve, make those available and um, then just identify them as what templates that you want to put into Realvolve and, and then actually just type them in or, or paste them in to the Realvolve template editor. Um, if there's anything that you know certain things have to be done on certain days following, you know, go ahead and put in the calculations for zero days after start date or so many days before the ending time or, you know, whatever you want to do here. Most of the time, there's going to be, it's going to be based off of a start date. This is just a, a series of things that you do. Maybe for the first 30 days, you've got 15, 20 different things that you're doing for this team member. Um, after that, maybe it, it narrows down to every couple of weeks or every you know, month or so of, of things that you do until you know, at the end of the, the new agent phase, they are now fully integrated into your system and just making sure that they understand that. So we can go through and create the spreadsheet and then start using it to do the process. So let me get into my training site. Hey, Mark, do you happen to have a copy of this blank spreadsheet that we can share in chat? Yeah. So if we go to help.realvolve.com, whenever you go to the help site itself, there is a getting started area. And we do have the, the workflow worksheet as a PDF if you want just a printed version, or you can do the Google Sheet version. So let me give you this. And we'll put this into the chat area. Chat. There's the link. Now, what it'll do is it'll say, hey, make a copy of this spreadsheet. And this is just going to give you a blank spreadsheet. You, you click on make a copy. And it will ask you um, for the information. So you can just go in and start typing in your information. Um, the width. There is a little setup area. So all the menus for this item, uh, you can go into setup and you can add the menu items right here to the list. And, you know, if you need to add your own name uh, or add other team members that you want to be in this, and then they'll be available from the drop down for you just to select. Awesome. Thanks, Mark, for sharing. Absolutely. So what I would do is I would go into the workflow area, and I'm going to create a new workflow. We're gonna call this a uh, new agent onboarding. This will be a contact workflow and pretty much everything else you can just kind of leave and I'll click on add. So now we've got the workflow itself. Um, we've got to add, start adding the tasks. Now at this point, what I'm going to do, let me, let me uh, squeeze this up a little bit. We're going to move this one. And what we're going to do is just say, okay, we're gonna start down through this process. So add an activity to this, you know, verify the contact information is in Robo. So what, the first thing that I would wanna make sure of is for this contact, I'm gonna start this on, do I have all the necessary information? Who's going to do it? In this case, you know, team leader, I could do this as a role. I'm just gonna leave it as Joe agent. I'm not gonna mess with any of these, but the who's it done with? In this case, it's done with the workflow contact and it's a to-do and zero days after start date. 
And this, in this particular case, I want to create a checklist of things that I would want to, to know about this user. In this case, I want their mobile phone. So I want to say, what's their home mobile phone as a checklist item. And what I'm doing in a checklist, you can create static items. Static items are just words that that's what you type in is what they'll display. We also have the ability to create merge fields. And whenever the merge field is used, it will show you the value that's currently in the database field for that merge field, or you can type in information if there's no value in there, or you can change it if it's, if it's not correct. But say I want to make sure that I've got the home mobile phone, and I want to make sure that I've got their, um, their email address, so their home email address. Um, you can put in you know whatever other information that that we'd want to but this is the first thing that we want to do is just make sure that they're um they're added with their mobile phone and checklist email checklist the other thing that we might want to do is say hey let's add a static item that says add to the team team spreadsheet just as an item in my my to do is um add to team spreadsheet now this is this will just come up with those words and you can just check them off once you've added them to the spreadsheet. So once I've got everything done there, then I can click on add. So there's my first item. Um, next item on this here is going to be, you know, send out the welcome email to announce the new agent. So we want to send an email to our existing team. So I'll create another new activity. And in this case, I'm just going to grab this, paste it in. Um, this is assigned to Joe Agent. Who am I going to do this with? Now, Sarah was showing this where she was coming in and choosing a specific contact and then doing a search for each of the team members that, that was in there. Um, any, any agent or any assistant in there, you know, I could do this and add each one individually. What I would personally do is I would come down here into the tagged um, the tagged with area and say, send this to anybody that's tagged with, you know, my team. That way I don't have to worry about changing this checklist. Every time I add a new agent, I just add them as a, my team to the tag or remove them if they're no longer with my my team. And then whenever I send out this email, it's going to send it to everybody that has my team tagged. Um, at this point, this is still uh, zero days after start date. We're still doing this on the first days. I'm gonna make this an email and we're going to do a, a template. If I don't have my template, so I'm gonna I'm gonna go over here. I'm gonna right click and just open this as a new tab. You can right click on this menu item, open as new tab, and then it'll create a second window. So what I'm gonna do here is create a new template, and I'm going to name this template onboard one email to my team. And this is a contact email. We're sending it to contacts. In this case, the subject, and I'm just going to, what I'm going to do is I'm gonna come over here and grab Sarah's subject. In this case, team name, it's gonna look in your settings in the setup section for the team name field, welcomes, and then whoever I'm sending this whoever started the workflow on the workflow contacts first name. So it'll say um, the RealVolve team welcomes Jim Smith or Jim in this case, it'd just say Jim. And then anytime I'm doing merge fields, you just put in bracket bracket and it'll give you the list of the uh, merge fields that are available. And I could say team name. I'm just doing merge field team name. Um, would like to welcome bracket bracket um, first name. I would say the workflow contact first name. And actually what I'll do, I'll just grab this entire thing here. You just, instead of I'm going to do a paste of plain text in here 
and it puts it in. That way, what we're doing is we're putting in team name. Um, the real uh, real Evolve team would like to welcome the workflow context first name, last name, and his or her mobile name number is this number. Please um, send a welcome text and attach your contact card. So this just goes out to everybody that's currently on my team with the information of my new team member. So I can, this onboard one, click on save on this. Actually, I'm going to change this to a transactional. Transactional just doesn't have the unsubscribe option. And click on save on that. So now I can come back over here. On the activity itself, we're going to create a new email. So send announcement is our title of this action. In this case, I want to send, I could do it with preview or send automatically, whichever way you'd prefer to do it. In this case, we're going to send this as an email and we're going to do onboard one, which is the one that we just created and click on save, click on add. So now I've got two activities. The first one is the, uh, actually I wanted to set this probably to, to order number two. Welcome, send that. That way, whenever it's done, it's done in the list. It'll show it in order. Uh, verify the contact information, make sure everything's right there. Then I'm gonna send out the email so that I know that they've got a email address in their record. Um, send a link to the contact with the, the team spreadsheet. We could certainly send an email out with that. Invite the them um, to the Dropbox and Zillow. These are all just emails that are going out each week with different content. So here's one where, you know, use the link below to access the list of team members and then insert your link into this template. It's sent out, you can click on the spreadsheet for your link. That's a good, easy way to, to keep an updated list of your team members. If you've got some other source, send them the link to that other source, you know, whatever you've got there. Um, this one is actually an email to their system admin that says, hey, you know, add this newest team member, John Smith, to Dropbox and send an invite to our team on Zillow. Just a very simple. This particular one, we would actually do the similar type of thing where we're sending an email, but instead of sending it to the tagged people, we would send it to probably a specific contact, which is our system admin. The checklist for the bio um, she she uses. What what are some of the ones that's important that you think, Lisa? Let me look on your, your or list here. That final let's see, sign up for the agent profile. So let's let's do a checklist of things. So you go ahead and just update that one. So let's make a checklist of things that as the admin of the system, we want to go in and make sure that we complete certain things. This is that checklist for um, realtor.com, agent profiles on each site. So agent profile on each site. Workflow contact, I might do this, you know, two days after the start date, in which case we wanted to do Zillow. Mm -hmm. Julia, Realtor.com, our website, anything else? That's all that I had online. Yeah, that's, that's good enough. Click on add. What's another one? Continuing add, okay. Or check for the license. You, you head on here. Uh, mine was just to review or verify that I have like the W-9, like copies of the okay. W-9, a copy of the agent's license uploaded to Google Drive. New agent checklist. May we do this 
um, day two, whatever, W9 on web. Uh, hey, those, those items again. Um, it was the W9 and it was a copy of the realtor's license. And even a copy of their driver's license, just so it's all in their agent folder. A copy of their E&O insurance, like their deck page. It's important. That's all that I had in mind. Okay. Training items, things that you want to make sure they get trained on. Um, the one thing that I did really like was there was a final checklist review. So on week one, Courtney sends out this email that contains all the different things that this new agent needs to do. So let's, let's take a quick look at that. So this, you know, contact the board office and schedule the agent mandatory training. Uh, contact for the headshots, all these things. These are all checklists that the agent should do, that needs to do. These are the same checklist items that you could go on and put as checklists just to verify that, that you actually got them done. So the final checklist review, do I have their headshot? Do I have all the other information? Which still goes along with this new agent checklist, but you actually may do it at the very end just as a final review, final check of the process to make sure everything got done as a checklist item. What we're going to do is I'm going to make available, I'm gonna create these as a workflow and I'm gonna make these available as a download for everybody. And we'll post that into the Facebook community so that you can just install it and then make changes to this one if you want add items to it, remove items. But I want to kind of just show you what it would look like then as new agents come on board, we would use this particular piece. Obviously, we've got lots of things. It might take, you know, take you an hour just to do the brain dump, go in and start creating each of those items on the checklist that you do for your processes. And I don't know, again, I'd love to pick Sarah's brain you know, how long did it take her to actually come up with the list that she has? But you might, you know, reach out to Sarah. You can reach her on our community as well and say, hey, you know, can would you be willing to share your process? But some of them is very specific to what she's done and what she does in her systems. So it may not actually work for you. But so let's go over here to our dashboard. And let's just let's create a new contact in here. And we're going to say our new contact is Edmund Jones, uh, agent. And we could just come over here to the radar and I can start a workflow. New agent onboarding. And click on next. So. You may have 20 things, 30 things, whatever it is that you're doing, certainly create them there. If there were any activities that were kind of conditional, you could create groups and, and uncheck things if needed. But in, in ours, we didn't. We're going to start it on today. And there's things that will go for however many days that the workflow actually works through. Click on next. This does use the tagged with or tagged with any of. And because that, it'll bring up a little warning saying, hey, are you sure you want to send an email to anybody tagged with anything? This caution comes up because if you're using this for other purposes, like newsletters or something like that, where you're, you're wanting to send it out to a lot of people, you only want to start workflows like this one time on your own contact. Otherwise, the emails will go out multiple times and you really don't want that for like a newsletter. So this is just a cautionary Thing is saying, hey, we're going to send this welcome to my team. And we click on done. So it goes out and creates it. <clears throat> so once it creates it, then it's available now in the system. So on your dashboard, on your main dashboard, it'll come up with these items, or you can just go to your calendar and see them. In this case, I just want to go to my activities list 
and start doing them. So I want to verify the contact information was added into Realvive. I, I only added the name and the title. I really need because some of my content, some of my emails and stuff that I'm sending out requires the the mobile phone and the email. So I would want to put that in there. Five 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 one two one two. And then the email. Did I get those in there? Yes, I did. I need to add them to my team spreadsheet. So then I'd go out to Google and, and do the, the process of adding the information to the spreadsheet. An advanced feature here again, and I, I mentioned it, is now that I've got the phone number, the email, and the name, I could have this as an action that simply uses Zapier to add them to that Google spreadsheet for me automatically. So you could just click on the, the action to run and it would go through and, and add that information straight to the spreadsheet. Once it's added, then I can click on save and close. Now that activity is done, it gets knocked off the list. I, I do have a bunch of names on there, so I don't really wanna send this out. But what I could do is send out the announcement to everybody that's on my team and, and click on run. So I'm not gonna do that, <laughs> but what it would do is it would find everybody in my database that's tagged with my team. It would then send them the email with the workflow contact, Edmund Jones, and I've told it to also put in the email address and the phone number of Edmund Jones in that email so it, it sends it back to them. You could also just simply say, hey, you know, here's the information. Also check the spreadsheet for continued use in the future or whatever. So making sure that's in there and then click on, I'm gonna click on skip just so it does it. So now I'm done for the day for that. And a couple of days later then, August 12th comes around. I need to um, make sure that I do my agent profile on each site. So I can come in here, make my changes on Zillow, complete it, save and close. Um, if I don't have all my checklist items, the actual activity is not complete until everything's done. Um, let's put it on Trulia. I make my changes, go on realtor.com, make my changes on my website, make my changes. Now that everything is completed in the checklist, the activity itself is now done and click on save and close, it goes away. All these are the same type of thing. Did I get my W-9? Did I copy, get a copy of the realtor license? If not, one thing that you could do is you could have actions on here that says, you know, email requesting driver's license, email requesting information, or you could simply send an email that says, get the things that aren't checked in the checklist. The incomplete checklist merge field can give you a list of the things that don't have checklist items and be able to email that out. That's a very powerful feature that, that we have in our templates and emails that goes out. Once we've got everything, now our, our list is done and we've completed all the contacts. One of the, the nice things about those merge fields is whenever I added it to the merge field, it went ahead and added it to the contact record for me. So I don't have to know where the information is. I just fill in the checklist. So very easily access that. Any questions on that? I know I went through that very quickly and we didn't put in everything in the list, but what we'll do is we'll make that available to you guys. Any questions? Okay. Um, oh yeah, the important documents. Got that. Set up your, okay. Um, setting your team member up in real world. Um, some of the things that we talked about, updating the settings, um, update the contact record, make sure you get their email and, and SMS templates set up, um, selecting an SMS number. If they're using RealVolve and you want them to be able to do things, there's actions that you should make sure that you complete just to make sure they're fully set up. And, and going into the settings area of RealVolve, uh, making sure their contact record, uh, make sure they've got an SMS, make sure that they're in the right time zone. Um, I cannot tell you the number of times that 
uh, new agents come in and, and it, it does try to pick the, the correct time zone for you. But depending on your serve, uh, depending on your uh, firewall, it may not pick the right time zone. So you want to verify time zones as well. Any questions on that? Okay. Uh, can you share the word templates? Um, I'll check with Sarah to make sure, but um, I, I think we can probably do that. Um, Lisa says no, but some of these are things that I actually created and, and changed this, this template here. This is Sarah's. Some of these are Sarah's. I, I don't want to give those away, but there's others that I have in here that I will make available. Any other questions? There's a lot of comments that I didn't get to go through. It looks like Lisa's taking care of everything there. Mark, Susanna had one more that she just wanted to know that uh, does she need to find out who their cell carrier is so we can send SMS? Okay, so no. The way we do the SMS piece is in settings, if you go into settings and you go into the SMS service area, we send emails through our email server. We also send SMS messages through our own SMS server, but it's a dedicated phone number from our service. We don't have a method of sending spoofed text messages. Uh, you can actually get in trouble for that. What we do is we allow you to set up and there's a process. This has already been set up, but you'll select which country you're from, what area code that you want a number from, and then you can pick an existing number. And then anytime anybody texts to that or from that, you can be notified on your existing phone number. So you don't need to know what carrier it is. It just uh, kind of connects in through our server's SMS number. Good info. All right. Awesome. Pretty much at this point, we're done. We're kind of over time. I just want to hit a couple of few things. Um, we are getting to release the mobile app. If you guys are interested in early access, you can still kind of get into that. I'll make these slides available where you can go in and um, access the test group. But we are releasing this on the 15th. Make sure everybody knows about that. Anytime that you guys need help or support, there's a help and support stuff. But a um, couple of things that we want to make sure that you guys were aware of, and this is really, really good information for premium services. All the stuff that we did are things that our navigators kind of help you with as you set up your systems, this type of thing. And we've got a lot of workflows and templates and stuff already set up. If you don't have systems, we've got systems available. You can go through our navigator programs. We do have a 33% off the semi-annual NAV program, which is Lisa heads up, and she'd be happy to answer any questions on that. If you want more information, you can also just go to our sales team and get information about that. Now, this one, this one is kind of the, the biggie. We released our uh, self-service navigator program, which means you go at your own pace. Some training pieces that the navigator side has set up, <clears throat> this retails at over $2,000, guys. We're making this self-paced courses, the Navigator Workflows, which is $1,400, $1,500 worth of value today only, if you guys are interested. Reach out to our sales team and you can get it for $499 today only. What that is, is that's the 17 workflows of the Navigator program, 230 templates, Amazing value, guys. Amazing value. You can go through the, the self-paced course, do all the setup. If you guys don't want to do it yourself, definitely the, the premium services. They're actually the coaches. They're the, they hold you accountable for doing the things that you need to do. But if you want to do it yourself, you can certainly just come and, and do the self-paced course. Lisa, did you have anything to add on either one of those? Mark, you covered it, and that was just amazing. So um, absolutely, if you're interested, reach out to our sales department, sales at revolve.com, if you do have extra questions. Feel free to reach out to me as well. 
If you have additional questions or on anything that we covered today, um, you can email me. My email is simple. It's lisa at revolve.com. I'm more than happy to help. Um, but no, thank you, Mark, for explaining that. Um, it is, you know, for the self-service for $4.99, that is an extreme value. And like Mark said today, it is today only. No pressure. But if you do have questions, feel free to reach out to us. I pushed hard for this to be available to you guys. So don't, <laughs> don't let me down. All right, guys. Um, hope this was informative. If you guys do have any questions or whatever, you can certainly reach out to me, mark at realvolve.com. But um, certainly set up the system, set up the processes that you need for bringing on new agents. If that's, you know, you're in the process of building a team, make sure that you've got this in place so that as you bring those team members on, they get the training, they get the, the expertise that you have within your team um, the information they need to be good agents. And that's what we need. We need to make sure that we're we're helping our agents do their best. So hope everybody enjoyed it. If there's anything else, reach out. Talk to you later. Have a great day. Bye. See you, everyone.